So today we're going to be creating a scoreboard effect and the tutorial will be in two parts. The first part will be creating the actual pixelated effect and the second part will be focusing on the specific uh, animations that I did in my one. So the first thing we need to do to create this effect is build the actual screen and what we're actually going to be doing is creating all the LEDs or the pixels that are going to light up and create our image. Now to do that we're actually going to use the cube and we're going to add two arrays and what these arrays will do is actually define how pixelated our image is going to look. So if we want the image to be less pixelated then you would use more cubes to create the screen which I'll show you in a minute and if you wanted it to be more pixelated then you would use less cubes because each one of these is going to represent a pixel. Now for my one I happen to know that 80 and then I'll add another array and 45 works quite well. Now you can't actually see um, this second one because we're affecting the x-axis so I want to set it as minus one on the z. We still can't see it because the cube has been rotated so I press Control A and do rotation and scale and you can see it's now appeared and then bring it all towards the middle and then scale it down a bit so we can see what we're doing and what we want to do is have a gap in between each of these LEDs so I'm just going to increase the size until we start to see a good gap and you may think a gap like this would be too big but remember if you're going to sit from a distance back you're not going to notice the gaps too much so we're actually going to make them bigger than we think they need to be so 1.5 should do it and then we're also going to change this to be 1.5 as well and we're actually going to project a texture onto the surface of these LEDs effectively making them light up and to do that we're going to use an extra scene because it's the render settings that need to change and they would uh, override the render settings we need in this one so I've already got a new scene but if you haven't just press the plus icon and then new I've got mine and it's called text all it has is my normal text object that I use. I'm going to go over to the world tab, add a new world, set it to have a black background and then environment lighting and just we can leave that at the defaults and then I'm going to create our orange material. And if I just set this to orange we're then just going to turn on shadeless because we want everything in this scene to be plain. So to show what's going to happen I'm going to render out an image, I'm going to press F3 to save it I'm not even going to bother to rename it, make sure it is a PNG just because it's high quality and I'm going to save it in the directory where my file is. I'm then going to go back to the main scene and then what we're going to do is actually apply our arrays so that we can unwrap it and add a texture. So I'm going to go U and then project from view and then change to the UV image editor, clear out the render result and you can see it's quite dense and then we're going to open the image that we just rendered. I'm going to actually go back to 3D view and wrap it again but this time with uh, project, from, project from view bounds, go back to the UV image editor and we've got our mesh overlaid over the image. So if we're going to 3D view we're going to quickly set up the material so I'm going to click new I'm then going to add a new texture, image or movie. We're going to choose the image we rendered from the other scene. I'm just going to click both so we can see what's going on. And we want this to use the UV mapping. And then I'm actually going to add another image or movie. And this one is going to be the same image. It's going to use UV unwrapping again. But instead of the color, we're going to actually affect the emit so it uh, uses a glow. So you can see it's gone a lot brighter. It's not quite right yet. So I'm going to desaturate this texture in the colors panel, set it to RGB to intensity so it reads the correct values, and then we'll render this to see what the effect is. So you can see right away we're getting a, a kind of a pixelated effect, but it's not quite right because if you think about LEDs and pixels, they can either be on or off. And at the minute we've got them kind of being sliced by the outline of the text and so some of them are on, some of them are off and some of them are just little bits and it doesn't look quite right so I'm going to go back into our text scene and this is the main trick really of how to create the whole effect 
we're going to set the resolution of this scene to render at the same amount of LEDs we created. So if I just quickly go back, this is 80 cubes by 45, which are the effectively our LEDs. So we're going to render this scene at the same resolution. So this is going to be 80 and then 45. So if we render that, and obviously it's a lot smaller, we're suddenly getting sharper edges. Another thing we can do to correct this effect is, as I said, LEDs are either on or off and they can't be half on or half off. So these pixels on the edges are transparent and they're not showing the full orange color, which I said it to be. And that's because of the anti-aliasing option here. So we're actually just going to turn it off and then making sure we're on 100%, we're going to render this again. And you can see we're getting uh, pixels that are either on or off and we're not getting any transparent pixels. So I press F3 and you can see it's gone red because it's found our old file and you may wonder why I'm just using this small window and not expanding it and it's because when I was doing this and I was doing a lot of changes and I wanted to quickly save it so I didn't even bother looking. I knew it had gone red so it found the file. Press enter and that's just overwritten our old uh, file. I go back to the main scene and to its texture. I'll just press the reload button. I think it had already done it, but I'll do it just in case. And we'll re-render that. And you can see we're getting a nicer result. But it's not quite perfect yet. We're still getting some weird results. And that's because of how Blender is actually expanding our texture. You know, we've got an 80 by 45 pixel texture, but we're stretching it over, you know, half of HD resolution. So when it's being scaled up, Blender's actually interpolating the pixels in between, so we're not getting a sharp image like we should do. And you can actually see that in the preview. We're getting these blurred pixels. So we're going to come down to image sampling and just turn off the interpolation. And you can see we're getting a sharper result here. And then we'll just do that for the other texture as well. And we don't want any interpolation. And it's got a lot sharper. So we'll render that. And so there we have the fully pixelated effect. Now, I'm just going to check that the UV mapping is correct because normally I find it doesn't quite work straight away. We've got some pixels which are over to the edge. So I'm going to select everything and I'm trying to line this one up so it's perfectly within this box. So I'm press G and X and holding shift, I'll move it over and then do the same with G and Y. Just make sure it's in the center of its pixel box. Then select one of the UV vertices. Shift S, cursed selected, and then set the pivot point to be the 2D cursor. And what we're going to do, we're going to scale everything about that point so everything fits perfectly. So if we find one that doesn't fit so well, like over here, it's got a very thin border. So we'll do S, X, and holding Shift, we'll just pull that in a bit. And then we're going to do the same on the Y, so S, Y. And you can see we're just getting a more even border around everything. And so all the um, pixels are sitting properly against their UV LEDs. So back to 3D view. We render this. And now we're getting the proper result. So what we're going to do now is quickly do a bit of compositing. So we're going to composite a glow, which I seem to be doing in each one of my tutorials. So you should be used to it by now. So I've just gone onto the Composite tab. We're using Nodes and the Backdrop. I'm just going to drag this over. Shift A, Output Viewer. And then Shift A, Color Mix. So we're going to mix between the normal version and filter blurred version. And we're going to set this to Gaussian just set this to relative and that means that if I um, enlarge the size of my render I won't then have to enlarge the size of my glow it'll just scale up accordingly so set this to 5 and 5 mix in the original so I'm mixing between the two set it to be 0 0.5 and then make sure it's going to the viewer as well you can start to see the effect we're getting so that's a bit too much so that's or 2 and 2 and then I'm also going to add color, hue and saturation, 
and insert that on the one on top and just set the value to be 2 and this is the kind of the final effect you're looking at so basically that's the whole effect now just to prove how this works you can now render anything in this scene and it will then come out pixelated and you can then project it onto your screen and to prove that I'm just gonna add a random object set it to be orange render F3 to save enter to override the old one back to the main scene and then just refresh so it's appeared there and refresh and if I render now see it's pixelated that as well and so you can really put anything you want into this other scene and it will pixelate it and do everything correctly so for those of you that know exactly what you want to do and get out of this effect you don't really need to continue watching and the rest of the tutorial is really going to be focusing on some of the specific effects that I use such as the small fireworks I've done and the fade out and some of the star effects so the first thing we're going to do is the small little fireworks so I'm going to right click, place a 3D cursor, add a UV sphere and then over in the physics tab we'll add a new particle system now there's only going to be 50 particles we'll have them starting at frame 15 and we'll end emitting also at 15 they'll last for 20 frames and we'll give a bit of randomness at 0.5 we can leave all this at the default the velocity we're going to change the normal to 2 and then a randomness of 0 0.25 just to give them all a bit of difference we'll then turn on rotation and we want random and that can also be 2 we we'll set the size to be 0 0.04 but that will probably change in a minute we'll put the brownian up to 0 0.8 just to it gives it a, kind of a bit more randomness as it moves a bit of wiggle and we'll also put the dampening up to 0.213 and then we're actually going to add the object that our um, particle system is going to be emitting and that's going to be another cube so I'll just change that to be orange everything in this scene is going to be orange and that's just because how I wanted it you can just do it in full colour but the effect I was going for was orange so everything's going to be orange now back to the particle settings and we're going to set the render to be an object and it is going to be cube 001 which I've named very well again and then in field weights we're going to turn down the gravity all the way and we're actually going to turn down the force all the way because we'll be using a force field later and we don't want it to affect these particle systems so let's give that a run through alt a and you can see we're getting a nice little explosion so just go into camera view place it a bit I'm actually going to put the dampening down to 0.15 let's give that a run through just so they go out a bit further dampening effectively is stopping them if you watch them they uh, they go out and then they all stop at their boundary before disappearing and then I'm just going to duplicate this so we've got a few more and then at the top you can see we've got a 3 because all 3 objects are using the same particle system so I'm going to click the 3 to make this particle system individual and then I'm going to change the start time to be 25 you have to actually change the end uh, first because you can't have a start time that is greater than end time so you have to put this value in first and then click the 2 because there's only 2 users now there's just 1 and this one will be put 35 in the bottom one and then 35 if we run this through we get this which is a nice effect and I'm actually going to move all of these onto layer 2 because later on we're going to be doing some more compositing and they need their own render layer. The next thing we're going to do is create that kind of effect where the whole thing seems to fade in solid um, orange and then fade out again. So I'm going to stay in the camera view, shift A, add a mesh plane and we're going to use an array just like the first one. So the first array was going to be 80 the second one is going to be 45 this will be 0 and this will be minus 1 and then control A rotation and scale and we're just going to try and scale it up or rather move it over so it's in the corner and scale it down so it fits entirely in the view 
And we're actually going to make sure it's in front of everything first. To do that again, just move it over. Scale it into make it a good fit. We're then going to make sure we've got merge set on the array. And apply that. Merge and apply. And it means when we go into edit mode, all these faces have joined together. So the first thing we're going to do is use a really cool modifier called build and we're going to set it to random randomize and it's kind of the opposite of the explode modifier if, you, if you've used it. I'm going to set it to 45 and the length will be 40 and that's how long we want the effect to last. So if I just play this through, all through explosions and then it fills in. Just add that material in. And now it's solid, we're actually going to combine another particle system with it. There's going to be 3,600 uh, faces, and I happen to know that because that's the number of faces we've got, and that's what we're going to be exploding. We're going to have a lifetime of 250, and we're going to start around frame 80, and end around frame 120, so it's going to last for 40 frames. We're going to uncheck random, put random down here, because that's the order it's going to emit in, and this is where they're going to be emitted from. The normal is going to be 0.1, and the Z is going to be 2, so it moves upward a bit more. And that's going to have a randomness of 0 0.5. We'll put rotation on and dynamic on, so it can be affected via force field. And we'll set it to be random and a randomness of 10. We don't need to see it because it's using the plane. And we don't need to see it in the display. And then now that we've got our particle system, we can add the explode. And then after that, one more modifier, I'm going to add solidify. So that all these are a bit more like cubes. So if I go back to the beginning, play it. Fade in because of the build, and then it starts exploding. Now it is a bit slow, so I'm going to change that to be maybe 100. Give that a go. And that's a bit better. And then one thing I'm going to do is add in that force field. So I just right click here, add an empty. Over in the physics tab, tab it's going to be a force field. Strength of 5 and a fall off of 0 0.5 so that the power reduces over a certain distance. And then I'm just going to put that in the middle of the particle field. And so you can see we're getting a nice effect and that force field is just pushing them out a bit and again this is going to be on layer 3 and then shift 3 to splex again it's going to be on its own uh, render layer and then the last thing I'm going to do add in a mesh circle press F6 to bring up the options we're going to fill it with a triangle and then set this to 10 tab into edit mode and select every other vertice Scale it in, we've got a nice star. And then I'll tap out of edit mode. This is going to have a sky material, so it renders as transparent. I'll then duplicate it, scale up, move it back. And this one can have an orange material. And then I'm going to select both, duplicate, move them back, and scale them up. And then you can select all of these, join them together. Scale them back a bit with S and Y. And then making sure they're behind our text. We can just scale them up. And these will be on layer 4. And just shift 4 to make sure it's displayed. And that's basically most of the elements created. So then we're going to create our render layers. So this first one has the text on. That doesn't need sky. And it's only layer 1. Our second one, on layer 2, is going to be the explosions. So that only needs layer 2, it doesn't need sky. Layer 3 is our fade in, and that's on layer 3, and that doesn't need sky. And then the last one, layer 4, there are stars, and that's on layer 4, and we don't need the sky. So then I'm going to select everything, go to a bit of more of an interesting part, render that. 
And now we're going to do the compositing to bring them all together in the node editor. So use nodes, backdrop, shift A, output viewer. And we'll zoom in with Alt V. And then we're going to click this button here to show the transparency. And then we're going to duplicate this. And this is going to be the explosions. And then we're going to do Shift A, color alpha over. Add in our second image. And link that up to the viewer. You can see we've got the white bits here. And that's because I didn't uh, turn off the emitter from being rendered. So in the render settings, we don't want uh, the emitter to be rendered. Do that for each one. Just render that. And then back to the compositing. So you can see we've got the fireworks we added in for the alpha over. And this is actually incorrect. We're going to add in the stars first. And you can see it's a bit difficult to see the text because it's orange on orange. So just to fix that, we're going to shift a color invert and just move it up here. And we're going to actually use the alpha and plug that into the color. And then shift a filter dilate erode. And the effect of this is that it will effectively expand the inverted alpha. So if we just link this up to the viewer, this is what the alpha looks like. If I reduce it, it gets a bit bigger. And we can effectively use that as the factor in our alpha over and it gives a little border. So if we want to increase the border, we just increase the dilate and erode. We're then going to duplicate this, add in our fade. You can't see it because it's not at that point in the timeline. And then the last one we're going to do, just duplicating these with Shift D, is our little explosions that we already did. And you can see again, it's a bit difficult to see them. So we're going to do the same trick as we did up here. We're going to duplicate these down and link in the alpha and use that as the factor here. And then just swap these around. And you can see we're getting the same effect. It's probably a bit too much. But without it, you're not getting any border. And although it's a bit difficult to see when it's animated, you will see the effects of this. So if I just render this, F3 to save, enter to override, back to the main, and then we'll update the texture, and you can see it's already done it, and then we'll render. And so there you can see the final effect. Anything we put into that other scene will turn out pixelated in here, and the only thing that's different from mine is that I had a few extra animations going on in the background. And it's quite a simple effect, and it just it's just dependent on you rendering at the same resolution as there are number of pixels that you have on your screen. I hope you found this useful and if there's anything I can prove please say so in the comments below. I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye!